so I think in a nutshell for people playing home, the way I'd explain it is that as part of living in a democracy, you have the right to request information from the government. And in some instances, the government may challenge that depending on, I don't know, maybe it's defence related or um, it could be sensitive information of some kind. Mm. Do you think that's right in a nutshell? Yeah, that's essentially it. My, my explanation would be that it is a general right to access documents mm-hmm. uh, from government. from So from government, central government, from government agencies, government departments, uh, through state government departments and agencies, but also then going further to things like schools, universities, hospitals. Um, so anything which is essentially public sector, you have the right to ask for information. Now, there are some exemptions around that, like security uh, agencies, for example, um, and things like census information. Uh, there are various exemptions uh, that mean you can't get hold of that information. But what it is supposed to mean is that anybody can access uh, information which people have done on your behalf. My uh, general philosophy around open government is that we are the ones that elect people to represent us. We're the ones that pay for it. They are doing it, in theory at least, on our behalf. Everything that the Prime Minister does, everything that your local MP does, your local councillor does, the Department of Education, you know, everything that they do is supposed to be for the benefit of Australians or certainly a a section of Australia. And if they're doing that on our behalf and we're paying for it, I don't see any reason why they should withhold that information unless there is a genuine good reason, like you say, for example, if it would compromise potential security, uh, potential security threat, or would compromise an individual's privacy. And those exemptions are all in the Act. My frustration often with the FOI Act is that departments often go much further than that. And they will try to withhold information, which is perfectly reasonable to get, just because they don't really feel like, you know, handing out this kind of information. So I'll give you an example. Uh, <laughs> the Australian Parliament, um, so Australian Parliament House is not actually covered by the Freedom of Information Act. And some of the battles I've had with them to try and get information is absolutely ridiculous. Asking them for uh, a menu for the restaurant in the houses, in the Parliament House, where the MPs go, a sample menu, the lunch menu, and they wouldn't provide it to me. Uh, and I had to have a battle with them, basically running battle to try and get hold of this menu, a sample menu, which I wanted to know kind of what they were serving there as part of my research into parliamentary allowances and some of the subsidies that are provided. I also asked them, for example, for a list of um, lobbyists who have passes, security passes to Parliament House. Mm. And it wouldn't provide me with that either. Which is provided as, you know, standard in, in the UK and US New Zealand. This is kind of all on, on record. And they wouldn't provide me with a list because they said that it would affect the ability of MPs and senators to do their jobs. Because if they <laughs> knew if if the public rather knew uh, which lobbyists were in Parliament um, going around with their passes on that for some reason MPs and centres uh, would be restricted from doing their job. They didn't really explain it much further. So there are a lot of these examples where it's not, and they're not under the FOI Act, but you know, uh, but which is another problem in itself. You know, there's a lot of examples that I think where um, the government is not giving out information that it, it should be, which there's no good reason to to withhold it other than just it feels like we probably shouldn't give this out because it's going to put us in a negative light. So who who isn't covered under the Act? Parliament? Uh, so Parliament itself is not covered under the Act. Okay. Uh, so all of the departments are. MPs' allowances yeah. um, federally are covered under the Act because they are uh, dealt with by the Department of Finance and the IPA, uh, the Independent Parliamentary Expenses Authority. But Parliament itself, so anything around actual uh, things happening um, that it, uh, on the parliamentary estate are not covered by it. And then you get the security uh uh, agencies like ASIO is not covered by it, for example. You get census information is not covered by it. Really? Uh, Royal Commissions, uh, for example, not covered by it. The Government General is not covered by it except for, for administrative information uh, like financial information. But you can't ask, for example, uh, for documents around um, the granting of honours. Uh, f- so there are various uh, organisations 
agencies um, that aren't covered by FOI, but it covers many more uh, than it doesn't cover. Uh, so virtually all of the uh, federal agencies and departments are covered by it. Um, and certainly my advice for anybody, if they don't know, would be banging a freedom of information request and they'll soon tell you if they're not covered by it. <laughs> now, what can you request? You know, like when you do these submissions, to what extent, what can you ask for? That's so, reasonable. So you can ask for uh, any documents that they have. So one of the big flaws in Australian FOI legislation is that it only applies to documents. Whereas in the UK, for example, I used to ask, you can ask questions like uh, how many police officers have been suspended for negligence over the last year or, or whatever. Um, and the department or agency would have to give you the answer to that. Whereas in Australia, if you ask uh, such a question, they would generally say, well, that's not in the documents, so we're not going to tell you. So it's a big restriction, firstly, in the Australian legislation. Okay. It has to be something which has already been compiled into a, a document. So things like spreadsheets are documents, uh, and there is some provision in there for information to be pulled and put into a document. But if if departments want to play hardball, they can say, for example, that uh, what you're requesting is not a document. But generally, every document um, that is part of the government records you can ask for, it includes text messages, theoretically, or there's been some debate about what is actually covered. Um, what, about, there, what about email? So emails, yeah, e certainly email change you can really? request. Wow. Um, but of course, then you... It, could fall into one of the various exemptions. So if you're asking for emails, uh, one of the exemptions which is widely used is deliberative documents. So if they're saying um, that the information requested is part of a discussion trying to come to a conclusion, uh, then it should be exempt. Now, that is a broadly used exemption which kind of covers pretty much everything because everything you can say is, is open to discussion. Um, so there are various exemptions. Um, but again, I would say... The best thing to do if you uh, after a document is to put in an FOI request and see what comes back and see what exemptions are used. I've read through the FOI Act and I have a good feel for what exemptions are in place, but I don't think many other people have. I don't think many <laughs> other people should be uh, forced to read through the Act. So in the absence of, of uh, sitting down and reading a 300-page um, piece of legislation, I would uh, suggest the best thing is probably just to, to ask and see what comes back. And most of these requests are made on. It's not on right to know, is it? It's there's a you go through that the information commissioner. So the best way to put in an FOI request is to uh, go. I, I'd probably just Google FOI uh, with the name of the department or agency. Most of them, the federal departments have an address which is normally FOI at you know education or whatever. Uh, sometimes it's a bit different, so make sure you, you Google it. But generally, there's an email address. Some of them have forms to fill in. Um, states do it a bit different. In Victoria, for example, it's on the Victorian Information Commissioner's website mm -hmm. um, because there is a charge in uh, in all of the states. Um, there is a charge for information. Uh, so they use it as a way of then taking your credit card details and charging you for the privilege of asking for information that you've already paid to be um, put together uh, anyway. Um, Why are they allowed to do that and the federal government doesn't do it? Well, thankfully, the federal government doesn't do it. Uh, the ACT doesn't charge either. Um, but I guess the, they would say really it's to pay for some of the costs behind it. In Victoria uh, and most states, it's a uh, $30 charge or, or thereabouts um, in Queensland is a bit higher. Uh, I suspect the real reason is to try to discourage people from putting in FOI requests. Um, and look, it's certainly a big hindrance because uh, if you want to, for example, in the UK, um, uh, just an example where many of my examples are going to come from, <laughs> you get regular stories in the media about local councils and what local councils have been doing, how much they've been spending on whatever. One of the ways of getting that information is doing round robin FOIs to all of the different councils. For example, the council, you know, uh, send it to the 30 odd councils in London, asking them for, uh, you know, how much they're spent on, you know, plastic coffee cups or whatever it is you want to try and find out. 
in Australia, that's really restrictive because as soon as you start sending out FOIs to councils, you're being charged $30 a time and you're soon going to get hit with a big bill. Jeez. So I do think it's pretty restrictive. And I would certainly, you know, even if you're going to have a charge um, to try and deter any unnecessary requests, which I think are minimal anyway, I think the charge should be a you know, maximum of, of 10 bucks. I think would be fair. I think $30 is actually quite restrictive. The other point I would make about charges is freedom of information saves public money uh, because it increases the scrutiny of what's going on. So when the Victorian uh, expenses scandal came about, which wasn't directly through um, uh, FOI that had some FOI involvement in there for me initially trying to get hold of lists of second um, of MPs claiming the second home allowance. The two uh, senior MPs who stood down ended paying back hundreds of thousands of dollars back hmm. to taxpayers because of the money that they had ripped off. And if the increase the level of uh, access to information and you increase the level of scrutiny of public uh, authorities on of them and of MPs, as also happens with the MPs allowances, travel allowances at a federal level, you're going to get MPs firstly paying back money, but more importantly, not trying to rip off that money to start with. So as soon as uh, the information around travel allowances became more public for MPs, uh, my guess is, and I think I, I would be uh, pretty accurate with this, is that all of a sudden MPs would take fewer journeys which were um let's put it kindly unnecessary uh for their work <laughs> and the public is saving money so i think any uh, improvement in open government and improvement in freedom of information uh, and other accountability is going to actually save money <laughs>